Good morning, travelers. I cannot believe we are already going into the second week of October, but here we are. Um, Halloween's going to be upon us, All Hallows' Eve. I've got some plans for that, um, some things I want to, um, some energy work that I want to do for myself to clear out a few things. Um, it, I think would be a great time to do that as... Um, that is supposedly when uh, the veil between the two worlds are the most is the most permeable. Anyway, um, it is the 9th of October, and we are two days out of the Mercury direct shadow phase. Yay! And um, we're coming up on a full moon on the 16th. Um, so I'm going to come to you today with uh, a reading or two. Um, turn that light off. Um, I'm going to be doing the Radiant White and also the Casanovas to just kind of see what's what's going on. So this will be a general reading uh, for all signs, uh, no specific time frame. Um, and you know what's interesting is I, I woke up this morning and someone emailed me and said that. Um, it was on a comment from a Gemini video back in November 2015, last year. And the comment was that they the situation played out up until now. So that's almost a whole year. So when I say to you that timing is relative in the tarot, you know, I really, I don't know, I can't say when something will occur. Sometimes I do personal readings for people and you know, two hours later, they come back and go, oh, my God, you know, it happened just like you said it would. And then sometimes I don't hear from people uh, until months after the fact. <clears throat> and like in this case, almost a year. So it just depends. Um, so this is a general message and the reading will not resonate with everyone. Um, the messages will not resonate with everyone in order for you to know if uh, what is happening around your situation, it requires a personal reading. Um, and you can click on the link up here in the right hand corner. I never do get this right. Up in the right hand corner, right there. Um, and also I'm gonna, I've started putting a um, link down at the bottom there that you can click and it'll take you over to the website. I ask that if you're going to book that you please read the important information on booking because that explains everything. Uh, it prevents you from having to send 35 stinking emails letting me know what you've done. When you fill out the form and make the payment, I get it. I already know that you've done it. Um, and that just kind of keeps the process going along and keeps my uh, inbox kind of not as cluttered. I mean, it's ridiculous. I, I have so many emails. Um, so, uh, by the way, if you've emailed me and you haven't heard from me, um, give me a moment. I'll, I'll be getting around to those today. If you've filled out forms, I haven't checked my email. Um, my social calendar is getting busy. So um, you will be hearing from me probably later today. <clears throat> I try to get my readings out. I don't like to, you know, keep people waiting for weeks uh, on a reading. Um, the most I, I like to is a, a day or two, you know, uh, three at the most. So, you know, people want, when you want answers or you need a little bit of clarity, you need that crap right away, not like two weeks from now. So, <clears throat> um, that's that. I'm supposed to be going fishing today. The weather has been really beautiful here. Um, hopefully those people uh, in the Florida area um, will have a bit of a reprieve today or a reprieve. Um, not a bit, but a reprieve. So let's see what the cards have to say. Now, I also want to explain to those of you, and welcome new subscribers. Thank you uh, for subscribing and coming on over to the channel. And thank you, diehards, for sticking around with me. Um, the one thing I want to tell you about the tarot is that it, when I lay a spread, even though I, I, I read it a certain way and I explain to you the direction in which I'm reading it, but it speaks on, it's a multi-dimensional tool. So it speaks about different things at the same time. 
Okay, it could be speaking about the past, the present, the future. Um, what? <coughs> excuse me. One card can represent two people or an energy, um, and so there's an interplay within the cards. They tell a story, and so sometimes people say, "Well, I don't understand." You know, explain it to me. Look. I can't explain to you it, it, you either get it or you don't. And I don't mean that to be in a facetious manner. Um, you know, it, it, and if you don't understand any of my readings, then perhaps I'm not the reader for you. So, um, you know, that's why I tell you, take what you can and disregard what you cannot. Um, it's, it's free will, you know? So, you, you take what you want and then you disregard what you can't. You have that option. You have that choice. You are free to do that. So, all right, let's see what the cards have to say. I do have the Sibylas and the Neapolitans here in case we need some further clarification. Right off the bat, the Magician has come out. Now, those three cards alone are very interesting. And then we have an Ace of Wands. Past, present, future, past, present, future. The nine cards are the Magician, the Three of Swords, the Seven of Coins, King of Cups, the World, Four of Cups, Seven of Cups, Nine of Pentacles and the Queen of Wands with the overall energy of the spread being the Ace of Wands. Now, I only have two Major Arcana in the spread and the Major Arcana take more weight than the Pip cards and the Pip cards are the numbered cards as well as the Court cards. Um, and in this reading, whether same sex or heterosexual, um, because it's general, you're just going to have to kind of, if it resonates with you, uh, hopefully I'll be able to explain the story to you in a way in which it helps you. Um, right in the center, I have the world card. Um, and the world card is the last of the major arcana. Uh, it is followed by the fool card, um, which speaks to new beginnings. And this is... Uh, the world card speaks to uh, lessons being integrated. It speaks to the end of a particular life cycle. Um, it speaks to uh, connecting uh, back to the earth. It is an earth card. It represents the earth element. But it is also governed by Saturn. And Saturn is uh, the Lord of Karma, the father of time. Um, and he presents restrictions, okay? And the restrictions are not designed to um, thwart you or make life hard. Sometimes it may feel that way or seem that way. Like everybody's against you. Nothing works right. Um, it's not that. It's just that it's designed to teach lessons to figure out. Maybe you need to figure out a different way of doing things, right? So <clears throat> that's why you're kind of stuck in the same cycle. And even though this says it's the end of a cycle, that person is still trapped inside of that little bubble there, that wreath, okay? Um, and they're trying to gain their balance before they step out into the energy of the fool. Um, so this is our focus, and this touches on everything in the spread. Now, I have the magician here, and the magician is ruled by Mercury, and the magician says... Um, when you marry your intentions with your actions, you can really create magic, okay? But the magician also um, has a lower vibrational energy, which says that, you know, as above, so below. So if you're in a higher vibration, you can really create some wonderful, wonderful things. But if you're stuck in a lower vibrational energy, you can manifest up some bad things happening. And 
in one sense, what I'm looking at at the top row with the Magician, the Three of Swords, and the Seven of Pentacles, and this also represents Saturn. It's Saturn in Taurus. Taurus is a fixed sign. So this is, uh, and Saturn, as I said, is, is a restriction or limitation. Um, and so that could be really, we'll, we'll get to that. Here with the Magician, the three, the three of Swords and the Seven of Pentacles, it's as if the cards are saying that there's a loss, there's a sacrifice that has come about. But it is something that was manifested on its own. Not on its own, but it was manifested, okay? Uh, in other words, uh, whatever your intentions and whatever your actions were led to this Three of Swords. And the Seven of Pentacles says that um, two things. Perhaps you should think about that or weigh that up. Um, but also it could speak to the fact that you see this guy is trying to do something and that guy's not doing anything. Okay. And so that means that whatever it was that you were trying to create, if you didn't really make the proper moves, if you didn't really nurture the work that you did. So we could, we could look at these seven pentacles as if to say, these are the seeds you planted. Okay. And you, you planted those seeds with the intention of reaping that harvest, okay? But somewhere between going, oh man, I'm going to plant a garden and, and this is what I want to get out of it, to actually reaping the rewards, you got stuck, okay? So there's something that has prevented you, you know, from being able to pick this pentacle up and put it on there. And that's why we have uh, this three of swords, um, now the interesting thing down on the left side, and this also speaks to the past. Okay. Uh, I have the magician, the king of cups and the seven of cups. Um, this king of cups, if it is not a water sign individual, a cancer Pisces or Scorpio, then this is someone who represents that king of cups for you. Um, and the king of cups is in the regular deck of cards known as the king of hearts. So this would be someone that um, you have an emotional connection to. So it's kind of like, and it, it's saying two things, that maybe you've been wanting someone to come into your life like that, and your manifestation, the person has shown up, but then there's some confusion here, okay? Um, there's a lot of uncertainty surrounding this issue, um, almost like it's too good to be true sort of a thing. But what's most interesting is having the magician connected with this particular king of cups. It's like this person has did some deliberate things to confuse the situation. Um, deliberate mystification. Someone deliberately uh, confusing the situation. Um, remember, you marry your intentions with your will. Maybe this person didn't have clear intentions themselves when they started out. Um, Maybe uh, the actions that they did did not match the words, okay? Um, either way, it's kind of like, if, if this resonates with you, it's kind of like this is something, you know, I, I don't know. We'll look at that with the Sabilas. But across here, we can see that this King of Cups um, is on the threshold of stepping out. He's limited in some way. But what's interesting is the Four of Cups says that it's because um, this person uh, doesn't want to move. The Four speak to a stability, but it also speaks to a stagnation, okay? And um, this is saying, this is, hey, it's time to step out of that, that circle now. So here I'm going to offer you the opportunity to do that, but the person refuses to accept it. There's something about it that they don't like, that they don't know. Maybe they don't trust it. Um, maybe it's not exciting enough for them. Um, maybe this person is just plain old apathetic. So um, because they represent cups, you see. And in a sense, the, the three cups on the ground say, I already have everything I need. So why do I need to bring anything else? Everything is fine. But that's limiting. Okay. That's what Saturn does. 
Now, here across the bottom, um, I have this Seven of Cups. And the Seven of Cups can be two things. This is someone either spending time fantasizing or daydreaming. Sometimes I've seen it with the cups show up um, that it is someone who may have an issue with um, alcohol or drugs, maybe even gambling because I have these coins here. Um, uh, or also someone who's really confused about what it is that they want. What is it that they're looking for? It's a seven and I have two sevens here and sevens speak to um, a spiritual conflict. This is an inner conflict. You know, I, I, I've done so much so far. I want to do one more thing, but I don't know what that thing is. I don't know if I choose it, if it's the best thing for me. Um, it can also speak to fear sometimes. Um, being afraid here. Remember I said the person is not accepting. So it could also be fear, the fear of if I accept it, what's going to happen. Um, if this is someone dealing with issues of substance abuse, then, well, it goes without saying that the individual uh, is not, does not have the capacity to make the correct choices as if they're going from one thing to the next to try to see, you know, is that going to satisfy me? Is that going to get me to where I need to go? Um, but then I have this nine of pentacles here and the nine of pentacles is someone who is able to get a handle on, um, whatever their desires are. And I think that's interesting that the, these two cards are next to each other. They get a handle on whatever their desires are. They kind of harness those and they redirect the energy into something else. And in doing that, they're able to make substantial gains. Now, this is not necessarily to me always about the um, financial aspect, although because it is coins, that may be so. But um, this is the coins represent the material plane, the physical world, but it also represents the practicality of doing the work. OK, so this is someone who's really able to ground themselves. It's an earth card. Here we have grounding. Uh, these swords is this is people's thoughts all up in the air. This is shit not going right. Uh, uh, something wrong with the thinking process or the perception of things or their belief in something. Um, this person is grounded here. And they're able to, you see, there's there's grapes back there. And grapes uh, speak to abundance. Um, grapes take a lot of patience to grow. You have to have the right type of soil, the right amount of rain, uh, the right, you know, whatever it takes, the you know, location. Um, so this is someone who has been tending their garden and tending it very, very well. And they are now going to be reaping um, the benefits of doing the work. And we can see that perhaps this person is also coming from a space of some kind of loss or sacrifice, okay? Um, but they have, you know, there's still, I think, maybe something else that they need to get a balance on because this is a 9, not a 10. But uh, I see this Queen of Wands here. Now... There's an interplay of the cards here from the Seven of Coins over to the Queen of Wands. So this could be someone weighing up whether or not this is a person for them. Okay, This would be a fire sign individual, Aries, Leo, or Sagittarius. If it is not a person, uh, an actual fire sign individual, it is someone who is um, confident, who's sexy, who's uh, very, very secure in their uh, own ego, might be a bit egotistical, but and narcissistic in a way, um, but can be. That's the negative aspect. Just like we have the negative aspect of this king, we have the negative aspect of the magician. <coughs> um, <coughs> but I would say that this is someone who has uh, is about to step into their own power. Let's put it that way. Okay. And you can see she's facing this. Both of these women are looking at this ace, a, a new beginning, a new opportunity. 
and maybe in order for this queen to make this this uh, a ten of coins, she's just going to have to go out and go ahead and do what she has to do. Um, we also see here again. This is like a failing of a manifestation here. You see, due to fear and uncertainty or confusion. Um, see those clouds there? Those clouds represent mental confusion um, about things on the earthly plane. You know, I have I have a mountain. I have uh, coins. I have peace. I have the dragon, which represents power. Um, the snake, which represents temptation, but also arcane wisdom. So um, let's take a look with the Sabilas. Here, I think that this queen has done a lot of work. Uh, and there's some things that she wants to accomplish and she's thought about maybe this offer here maybe an offer came to her or will be coming to her this is the future column and she herself is going to have be faced with the same choice as perhaps this king of cups maybe that's why these two are connected um, the offer comes but really I'm okay where I am right now why because I got some other shit I'm trying to do so it, it's it speaks like there's a decision these two cards together there's a decision either that has been made or will be uh, be coming up so let's take a look and see see to me if this queen has been confused about anything she worked on that she worked on gaining her own um, or at least worked on getting herself grounded again so that she can focus on whatever it is she wants to do. And the Ace of Wands is, this is an opportunity. Now, you know, what's interesting is I want you to look at, you see, there's lots of clouds. See that? That hand has a cloud. These cups are in a cloud. Um, and here's this Ace being presented. It's in a cloud. Um, and the Ace of Wands speaks to, you know, news coming in. It speaks to opportunities coming in. But this is not just the universe handing you something. It's something you got to work on. It's a Wands card. So this speaks to your ambition. The coins speak to you doing the work, the, the physical, physicality of doing the work. The wand speaks to your inspiration, your ambition, your desire. Remember, marrying your intentions with your will. Um, and um, so we want to see what this is all about. You see, she has, I think this queen also has, maybe she's been doing things to bring about a change. She's manifested up this, this end of a cycle here she knows it's coming so she knows now she's got to she's got to marry her intentions with her will in order to get it done so let's take a look uh let me take a look at what the two sevens are saying i have two sevens here um and as i said the sevens are um an internal struggle It says self-confidence issues may cause instability in the relationship. See, that's just what I was I was saying. Uh, she's on fire and ready to go. This person don't have a clue, okay? They, they don't have a clue what it is they want to do. And so whatever it is that they're trying to do, they're not successful at it because they are unable to marry their intentions with their will. Either they are easily distracted or they are fearful, or maybe they have, you know, substance abuse issues. So let's see. Oh, wait, there's another interpretation. Let me see what it tells you. I always like to give the, this, the different interpretations. So hang on. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. This says two sevens appearing in a spread together warns of false friends. So, um, and that's interesting. 
I kind of don't get that out of that. But uh, at the same time, you see those figures surrounding that? This could be someone who has themselves surrounded by a group of people. And without realizing it, um, that they're surrounded by the wrong people. Maybe not all of them. Hmm? That's that's interesting. A group or an organization. Um, and maybe they're coming to you in the manner that they're there to try to help you, you know, do whatever it is. This could be at work. But they have other designs. So to me, it could also be speaking of, let's say, for instance, you, you have a, a contract or a new deal or something that's coming up. Be cautious uh, in dealing with others uh, in that case. Uh, make sure that you dot your I's and cross your T's and do the research. Um, it may save you, end up saving you a lot of heartache. Um, and now that I'm looking at this right here, um, it could be if this King of Cups is considering joining forces or adding this Queen uh, of Wands into his garden, so to speak. Um, be very cautious of that individual. Um, see, here we have the cat at her feet. She has another agenda. I just said that. Um, this, there's a snail at the bottom. And so this could be considered to be a home move. Maybe maybe this king is wanting to move this queen in with him. Um, and the cards are warning that it might be too good to be true. I don't think this king has very good judgment in one respect. Um... He holds himself out to be uh, mature, emotionally stable, wise. Um, but sitting at the base of him says that his will and his intentions don't mix. Um, so let's see. This could be self-deception delusions, illusions, fantasy, fear. You see, this is the implication the guy's black. He's the, he, That's the shadow side of himself, okay? It's like he's in a nightmare and he can't get out. All right, let's take a look at that. Now, it's the Lamonte, male lover. Lecherezza, this is sensitivity. This is, um, maybe this person is highly sensitive and they're being bombarded with a lot of different information on a psychic level, okay? And it may, because it also speaks to irritability, but it also speaks to tact. How you do something or how you say something uh, makes an impact. Um, but... It, it leads to some kind of great foresight, some kind of plan uh, coming in. Uh, but if it's falling on the Seven of Cups, it's almost like it's saying the plan um, is not what you think it is. And that's a message that I'm getting. The plan won't go the way you think it is. These are, you know, and these are not negative cards. But it's just something about that Seven of Cups, that falling on the Seven of Cups, there's something surrounding it that I don't think has been realized yet. Let's put it that way. Um, let's see what the Three of Swords is telling us. Okay, a necessary sacrifice and a loss and some sorrow. Uh, the longing, the sighing, the nostalgia, waiting for your ship to come in. And then a Lamika. A relationship of trust or a confidant, a person that you can trust. But we see that this mercante has turned his back on those things. Yeah? He's got other plans. Let's see what the Four of Cups says.
he's really focused on this seven of coins here. What what's next? What's next? How do I how do I accomplish this? How do I get it done? Do I even have room for it? Well. You see, the offer that's being presented is because the person is still stuck in the past. Uh, this Namiko can be remembered now. It also said about about uh, false friends. There's the rival, the male rival, the enemy. Um, and maybe with the Consolante Sorpresa, somebody's saying, well, it didn't quite turn out the way I wanted it to, or this person screwed me over, um, but that's okay. Um, but it could also be, because these are cups, someone mourning over the past and not willing to open up emotionally fresh. Um, this could be fear, someone running away from their emotions uh, trying to run away from the past or afraid to face not only the past, but also the future. And they just say, hey, that's okay. It's okay. Remember I said apathy? So, um, let's take a look at this world card. I know you guys want me to look at the Queen of Wands. <laughs> I feel it. Y'all want me to look at the Queen of Wands? Okay, let's look at the Queen of Wands. <laughs> I feel y'all going, put your cards on the Queen of Wands. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> so let's see. <laughs> oh my goodness. Let's see what the cards have to say about this Queen of Wands. Jesus. I don't even need to say anything else. Oh my gosh, look, with the thief. And it's only gonna lead to sadness. And because, and I want you to look at this. I'm gonna take the first cards down from the Sabilis. The first card down was this one. Here is the Lamonte. No, wait, it was this one. Yeah, there's the Lamonte. Then I looked at the Three of Swords. See, he's still faced to the past, okay? Waiting for that ship to come in. Waiting for everybody's face that way. And then along comes this person. And so what this tells me is that this is someone who has a past with this queen and maybe this is weighing up you know the things that we've already built up together and maybe wanting to come back together um but remember i kept saying there was something about this these cards on the seven of cups that just didn't sit right um that's really too bad um Because what it says is that, remember false friends? False friends. And in a way, um, it's almost as if the curse of the person has already stolen something from you, but they will do so again. See, they're coming in. Um, I don't know. I, you know, I don't know. Um, let's pull these cards up and then we're going to do a Lenormand, a Lenormand, a um, Casanova. I had a bunch of people email me going, when you going to use the Casanovas again? That really resonates with me. So I'm going to do it for y'all today. Y'all are funny this morning. How many minutes am I? Okay. 
we'll just do a quick spread. I forgot to set my timer. That was only supposed to be 15 minutes, whatever. Um, I'm finding that since the Mercury has actually gone direct, direct, uh, Mercury is the god of communication. And so the cards are really speaking quite clearly and quite truly. Um, for a time there, that shit was confusing as hell. I couldn't make heads or tails. I was just trying to give y'all what, what the messages that were coming out. So um, we shall see. Okay. And let's see what Casanova has to say. Casanova has been tickling me lately. You know, and for a long time, he wouldn't talk to me that much. Uh, and that was why I didn't, didn't bring the cards out very often. He, he would only speak to me... Um, every once in a while. Um, and so I just kind of let him sit over in the box with the other cards and, um, maybe he didn't like the company that he was keeping. I don't, I don't know. That can't be true. He's Casanova. <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> he, you know, he was loving everybody. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, funny. I'm tickling myself this morning. Okay. <laughs> I tell you, he's been making me laugh. He's just been so funny in some ways. So let's see what he has to say to us this morning. Hopefully, um, he won't uh, be too facetious here. We shall see. We shall see. One more time, give us the message Casanova for this morning for October 9th, um, 2016. Here we go. Nine cards down. All right. Well, look there. Queen of Wands showed up again. Well, I'll be damned. What do you know? There she is again. How about that? This time she comes with Sagittarius at her back. The Temperance. Two of Swords. All right, this time I'm going to start the timer. Right in the center, uh, I have the card of playing with fire, this five of swords. Now, the five is, can be, it's outside influences this time. And here we, we lead off, I'm sorry, the, the cards are, the, the five of swords is our focus in this spread. So we have the chariot, the six of wands, the king of pentacles, death, five of swords, two of coins, 10 of coins, and this is our past row. This is a column. This is our future. And then I have um, the queen of wands and then the temperance with the two of swords here. Um, and again, if this is not a fire sign female, then this is, um, in this deck, she's known as someone who's rather shy and reserved. Okay, which is completely different from the way she shows up in the other day. All right. But the implication being is that she's full of fire. Okay, that's the implication. She hasn't even shown all of her fire yet. She's got a mask on. Um, so the fives represent, um, what do you call it? Outside influences. Um Things happening that, or competition, or fights, or delays, or arguments, um, and your thoughts surrounding those things. Um, the implication with it being that it's not being able to hold back, you're playing with fire. To me, that speaks quite with this queen. So we're going to look at that. Now, up here, we have the chariot, and it is a seven. And this is the universe trying to move you into a new direction. And I find that to be interesting because this is where the magician card was. And I have one, two, three 
major arcanas in this spread. We had, what, two in the other one? Might have been three. I don't remember just that quick. Uh, this is an event or the universe moving in to this six of wands. Okay. And that card, I can't remember. I always want to confuse it with uh, another card. So just give me a moment here. And I'm going to give you. Oh, Jesus. I can't see anything this morning. Okay. Passing adventure. A fleeting moment. Okay. Um, happiness for the small things. Can speak to rivalry and prejudice. I guess that's the negative aspect of it. All right. Um, but here, let's say that the universe brought you an opportunity. And obviously, I would think this is someone who is holding on. I think who presented, I, who presents this gift. He's holding on. He's, he's presenting an offer, but at the same time, he's clutching it quite closely. Okay. Um, why there's a tower over his shoulder. You see, he's, he's completely covered from head to he got gloves on, like he's going to get the offer dirty. Um, <laughs> so it is someone, I think that seized upon an opportunity, presented it one way, but it was just a fleeting moment. They never had any intention of releasing that pentacle because we can see death has come in. Um, and this is also a change. You see, and what's interesting is the universe says, okay, it's time to move. And then they just bam, just like that. It's all over, over and done with. You move so quick. It was warp speed. <laughs> okay. And it has to do with an offer. And this is what this card says. This is an offer or the promise, maybe a contract of some sort. It is a 10 of pentacles, something that was sincere in its offer. Um, but see, death says that you're playing with fire. It's, 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 it's a transmutation, but it's something you're not able to hold back from. And you're playing with fire. Death is trying to change that situation for you. But this is, you can't, you, you're allowing your thoughts to prevent the change from happening. That's what it is. Playing with the fire. You can't hold back. You can't stop yourself. I can't stop myself. Um, the two of coins represents hedonistic pleasures. So it's, um, that's quite interesting to me. The, the row is trying to tell me something else and I can't quite pick up on it yet. Hmm. This could be someone succumbing to, I mean, look at the way death looks. She's beautiful, you know? And there's that person that's lying in bed. He's old, he's tired, he's sick, he's infirm. And death comes beautiful. Who says, come now. It's time. But for whatever reason, it can't be done. And I'm not looking at, it's like someone's fighting against the change. But they're fighting against it because this is what they're doing or this is what they're interested in. And maybe instead of hedonistic pleasure, it can simply speak to, um, in a sense, it reads like narcissism here. Um, and that's not even the right word for it. I, I can't find, I can't find the word for it. Um, you see, look, 
the, the world the travel. I'm going to travel and this is what I'm going to do. But somehow or another, I want this to end up to be that. You see? And, and because in this card, he was accused of, Casanova was accused of running off with this chick. She was about to get married and he just happened to be leaving and she jumped in his carriage and took off with him. So they always blamed him for the girl running off on the marriage, but that was free will. She didn't want to marry the guy. He just gave her a damn ride. <laughs> that was free will. She jumped on that boat, that carriage all by her lonesome. Okay. He didn't force her to. And um, that's interesting. Um, this card is trying to tell me something else and I can't quite pick up what it's trying to tell me. Um, it's the start of something. It says enjoyment and pleasure and hedonism, you know, playing with fire. And maybe that's what it is. The change came about by not being able to hold back on your appetites and your desires for pleasure, self-pleasure, because no one's releasing that coin there, okay? Even this, simple enjoyments, it's like all of a sudden the desire to do this may be consuming someone's thoughts surrounding this queen of pentacles because here we have the card of healing okay um we have the uh temperance and this card speaks to the discovery of self okay um it is not about the indecision we can say that in one respect being that it is the two of swords but as you can see it's two people standing face to face with each other okay so these are two people who are maybe through communication are coming to some kind of truths, not about each other, but themselves. Um, it says equilibrium, adjustment, harmony, courage, the discovery of self. Yes, because it takes a lot of courage to look at yourself. Let's take a look at, um, see here this person is holding on for dear life to whatever they have, whatever gains they've had, and they're seated and they're cloaked and they're cloaked. They're not willing to, but death has come to say, look, and there's a healing. If you let go, everything will be okay. That's what it's saying. If you just accept, it will be okay. Um, the only person, I only have two characters looking in the same direction in this spread. Well, here's somebody. Let's take a look at what the death card is trying to tell us. I think that perhaps is the most uh -oh, significant card. It's present. It's leading the present. It's leading the charge into what's happening right now. But it also is about the ending of um, something in the past. Okay. Oh, shoot. Cards are flying everywhere. Cause see, the chariot is it's running away from death. And it's running away from the offer here. It's moving in a completely different direction. Kind of like it's going out of the spread. Um, as if the person can't help themselves from running away. The temperance is all about getting your emotions in check. And someone is not able to do that. This could simply also be about an, a power imbalance in the relationship. This is definitely somebody who is not wanting to face up. That's the shadow work, hidden intentions, lies, deception, deceit. And they're running away from that. 
but it's not getting them anywhere. It's the, it's making them ill. Is what it's doing. And there's the guy laying on the bed, sick, waiting for death to come. Now we're gonna take a look at this queen because um, remember I was saying that it could be two different people because here we had the king of cups right where the death card was yeah and at the seven of coins was here where this king of coins is so earth sign individual uh, Capricorn Virgo Taurus if not it is someone who has a position of power and authority and some wealth but look what's looming over his shoulder that shit could fall any moment and maybe that's why the person is cloaked, cloaked, is hidden. Uh, they're trying to hide from the inevitable, and but they don't want to uh, give up anything to make to make the change. Wow, that's interesting. Let's take a look at this. Um, Gran Signore on top of the Queen, King of Hearts. Vecchia Senora, a change with this queen. There's sadness and tears here, worry and anxiety for this King of Cups about this Queen of Wands. See, he's faced to the past. It's like it's repeating the same story. Remember I said in the last one, it's like that they, they've been together before. This is someone waiting for someone to come back. They're still, that's why they're holding on. And that's why they're cloaked. And that's why they're not making a move. They're, they're in the past. See, there's death. They can't even admit it to themselves. Temperance. There she is. Speranza, the hope. the hope someone coming back um, and the temperance now in this deck you know in the regular deck it's about the combination of water and uh, fire and water combining the two elements and we did have we had, we had a fire sign and a water sign um, let's see uh, what is this the, the temperance in this deck the temperance speaks to moderation Calm, care, patience, serenity, peace, virtue, understanding, and listening. You know, this is just odd. These three cards are... This is really someone thinking about, I guess, because Speranza can also be... Um, fear and anxiety and worry. We already see that. Let's take a look quickly at what the um, Two of Swords says. This is quite interesting. See, that king wants that. That's what he wants. But his thoughts are getting in the way. It's almost, this is where that seven of cups was, remember? There's some confusion. This is like an unclear domestic situation. That's what it is. Is un, There's unclear, it's an unclear domestic situation. I don't know if that means anything to anybody out there, <laughs> but that's what it is. The Mercante. The Letterato and the Costanza on the card of discovery of self. Hmm. This artista, this Letterato in the center is, is what is perplexing me. Let me find one of my many books one second and then we're going to close the cards down um jesus 
this. And I've got a billion here. Here we go. I want to make sure that I can understand what this letterato is trying to tell me. See, that, that devil card, I mean that thing. Hold on. There's the merchant, in exchange, a contract, a mediation and or an agreement. Hold on, I'm trying to find the... Huh. That's interesting. See, weight, dreams, but also apprehension, fear. Hold on, because I can't seem to stink and find the, um, I can't seem to find the artista. One second. Bear with me. The man of letters. Ah, there we go. <laughs> Duh. I just said that. Well, isn't that interesting? Uh, the man of letters. Now, I want you to listen. It speaks to a discovery. It speaks to a discovery. about perseverance and immutability. It's almost like it's saying that there's a choice. Is the person going to be true to themselves? It's a discovery of self. I don't know really people what this is meaning. This is an odd for me combination that comes out on the two of swords and my guides aren't telling me maybe this person is weighing up what they have done before with contracts this is an agreement and maybe this is about honor I don't know all right that's what I have for you and until next time namaste